Day one of rehearsals at Eurovision 2018 has come to a close. Nine countries sang, and they were... Ted. Ten countries <laughs> sang. It's been a long day. And they were Azerbaijan, Iceland, Albania, Belgium, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Israel, Belarus, Estonia, and Bulgaria. I think we should talk about it. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's do this! You guys, we don't want to be here all night, so let's go around and give our biggest grower, aka who improved the most, our biggest disappointment, who didn't live up to the expectations we had, and then finally our two winners, yeah? yeah. So the first one is biggest grower. Let's start with Porig. Well, my biggest grower was a song that before this, um, before today, I didn't rate very highly. When I first heard it in the studio cut, it was fine. Then I saw its national selection, and it was horrendous. And I'm talking about Belarus. He was out of tune, he had this weird suit, nothing worked. Today, it was in a weird way the highlight of the day because the staging was so bad that it was excellent. Yeah. And he, he, well, firstly, the boring bits out of the way first, he sang fine. The staging, <laughs> it was just like fabulous. Um, like fabulously bad, fabulously awful, fabulously brilliant, and fabulously everything. Just the rose, his outfit, like he, like he. I don't know what, like he was trying to recreate. It was like a melodrama, a Shakespeare written by an American soap writer. <laughs> um, like it could have been a script out of like a pretend TV show in Friends or something like Joey Tribbiani, yeah. and, and that kind of weird thing. And like even just like the little details that like. The rose being like, who comes up with the concept that he would be shot in the hand with a rose? Um, and even the trick that, how did he get it to look like convincing that it was going Pierce's thing? And there was just like little things. If you think too much, it doesn't make sense at all. At all. Because like she shoots the rose, right? So she shoots it, I think, the rose facing him. And yet he is impaled with the rose facing outwards. And then you were saying about the hole in his back where like how did he get that injury from the rose shooting him there but <laughs> it's just so memorable and it's so wonderful and like Eurovision needs to embrace the madness every little once in a while OMG Porig you are a man of my own heart this is also my biggest grower of the day <laughs> He could be giving a social commentary on The Bachelor. He has a rose, but the rose comes back to haunt him, to poison him. He told me in the interview after his performance that this is all about how love can hurt. You can meet a woman who's bad news and she can cause trouble. And you know, he said he's been with women like this in the past. So this is definitely a personal story. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's like a matador is having problems with his bull. Do you know what I mean? It's like, there's something very Spanish in this. It's very, there's something about it Latin, and he didn't mention that, but to us it comes across that way. It's just crazy, it's bonkers. The bloody back is very Halloween. It looks like his intestines have fallen out of his insides, been put on his back. And during our interview, I, we shook hands. He had red stuff all over his hand, mm. and he said it was very uncomfortable. So there's some kind of liquid. They're going for something real here. This is no joke, y'all. The pain is real and moist. It is moist. I love this. It's the one that I kind of think my friends back home who don't like Eurovision would vote for. Mm. And, and the song is also good, and he sounded great. He's been working with Alex Panay. Alex Panay, well done. This, he sounds like a real pop star. It's fantastic. Congratulations, Belarus. Uh, so my grower of the day is Albania. Um, I think Eugen, I, I was not a fan of the um, shortened version of Mal. And I think he really brought it to life today. Yeah. It's what I said, he just looks like your friend is up on stage and you want to support him. And you just get that vibe throughout the performance. I think he's a real, real star. And I, I'm hopeful for Albania's chances of qualifying now because where some others around him maybe didn't quite shine, I think of the first four people on stage, he was probably the one that I enjoyed the most. And you'd mm. think it's unlikely that one of them wouldn't qualify. You'd, you'd, you'd hope that at yeah. least one. Um, but then, then again, this is the semi-final of death, so who knows. But he deserves it based on the vocal and just the way he come to life on stage. Mm. All right, so from our biggest growers, we go to our biggest disappointment. Now we should say disappointment is not necessarily a bad thing. No. It just means compared to the hype before we got here. So it's not the same as the loser. That's not what we're saying at all. Yes, because my biggest disappointment is definitely not my loser because my loser, I'll just say it now, is Iceland. It was my number 43 going into the 
rehearsals and it still is. But my biggest disappointment was Bulgaria because there is just such prestige and caliber behind this entry because mm. Symphonics, they've created the last two Bulgarian entries. They've created Macedonian Serbia didn't end up being that successful last year, but they were still good songs. Austria's is one of my favorite songs. It's my third favorite song at the moment. Mm. They have had the occasional dud a la Brook in Malta and the lady in Switzerland, but this song itself is quite strong. Mm. And it sounds, it reminds me, it's like very modern Lorene-esque and it wouldn't sound out of place with her new material. But then the staging, I just don't like the staging whatsoever. I just think it's so bleak and miserable and it just makes you want to curl up in the corner and just like be like, what is life if this... <laughs> and there's no moment of redemption. Mm. And there's elements where it almost comes where there's the flashing lights at the very end and Yana is doing the big, she has the microphone up and she's kind of doing the big long note, but it just feels, it's just so bleak and depressing that like there's nothing, there's no light, it's just, because I mentioned Jamala, like Jamala was rescued by the big massive tree mm. and I don't know if we've had any other really dark um, acts, especially Nina Sabladi. Yeah, but she was kind of like. She had the flashy, she had those big True. wings and the silver tears in her face and stuff. Okay. But see, her <laughs> message, her message was kind of like that I'm a warrior and you can't keep me down. Mm. These are just like, we're going to love you beyond the bones. What does that mean? It's immaterial. It's not about this earth. Love is beyond the material. In any case, that song gave me life. I think they need to work on the staging. There was, they were experimenting today, though. And it was clear they were experimenting because every single take had different camera shots. So actually, to me, it suggests they're ahead of the curve in a way because they have a vision, an end vision, and they just are figuring out how to get there. I'm still confident. In any case, my biggest disappointment, and I, I need to explain this. This is one of my top songs of the day, okay? But it's also one of my disappointments of the day. It's Israel. About 85% of this song I love. I think the staging looks great. The best part is her, she's amazing. I love the cro <laughs> the close crops of her face where she's doing voguing, giving attitude, serving it. I love the backing dancers. It just, it was amazing. In the beginning when she's a cappella, it is so strong. It is winner caliber out of the box. But the chorus at the moment, it's the camera angles. Because for whatever reason, when they go far back, I lose the sense of excitement and fun. It may be because the arena is empty and we need an audience to bring that to life. It may be because, you know, when she added smoke in the final run through, it did have more life. But I think something needs to be tightened because I was like, this is a banger and yet I'm not banging. Mm. That said, this is still one of the, the strongest songs of the day. This yeah. is still in contention to win. There is no doubt I am not hating. I want Israel to slay. I'm just giving this one reservation, which is that I think something isn't quite right with the chorus. Do you, mm. do you know what I'm talking about when they pan out? It yeah. just, she disappeared and she's the strength of this. She has the fire, the passion, the talent, the likability, the charisma to win. And so I just want to keep her in focus. Like, I don't care about the stage. I care about Netta. I think, was it, was it, somebody was saying that the best bit about the music video is the fact that it's all close and it's close up of her. Yeah. And that's what you kind of need on stage as well. Just keep the focus on her or the dancers, because, you know, they feature in the music video. Yeah. But they're also express, they all have great expressions. They give great face. So keep the focus on that. That's the way to do it. Um, it isn't my disappointment. I was a little, I was a little disappointed, but it's not anything. And it is still quite high up there for me today. My disappointment was Belgium. Because, um, you know, I've loved Belgium f for years and, like, uh, since 2015, I've not really ever disliked one of their entries. And this is probably one that I was the coolest on going in. But I was mm. still hopeful, like, oh, you know, it's Belgium. They'll pull it out. They'll do something really good. And, yes, last year, Blanche, we were writing her off after the first rehearsal. But I just kind of feel like it just felt like she was lost on stage. And the only really thing I remember now about it is the opening shot where she looked way too washed out and um, I realise I'm saying that I am the palest person um, but it, it just, you know, she had that like red or something makeup under her eyes which didn't look great and then I just remember sort of like her wandering around the catwalk and nothing really gripped, I, I, there's nothing that really stands out because I remember bits about every other rehearsal particularly today and that's the one that really doesn't and they needed a gripping stage performance to just lift this up a bit more mm. um, they might get it right and you know again like we said Blanche got it right Luik got it right 
So Belgium aren't necessarily an out of the box package all the time, but this just feels like it's going to need something really special to get there. And it's nothing, it's not her fault at all. No, and I spoke with them after um, our interview, or rather during our interview after the rehearsal, <laughs> and they said they have an end vision in mind. And as I said with Bulgaria, they're just experimenting. They know where they want to go, mm. and they have different ideas, and they're playing with them. So what we will see in the next rehearsal, I think will be not radically different, but significantly different to what we saw today. They're figuring things out. They know they have, sorry, that is so rude. <laughs> they're figuring things out, and they're going to get there. I have faith. You know, and the Makeup, they, they're aware that she looks too pale. Mm -hmm. Again, because special lighting is required to get the contrast, because she this is all about contrast, she kept emphasizing. Black dress, she needs to be pale. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I'm keeping the faith, because vocally, she was so good. Yeah, oh, so much it better than the rehearsal. No pre, nerves, the no pre nerves. Parties. Yeah. No. In any case, it's time to move on to our two winners. So let's go around with our first winner. And th this is not in any particular order, unless you want to make it that way. Uh, Porig. Well, I'll just make it in an order. My second favorite performance of the day. And each act roughly does two or three rehearsals. And my favorite performance was specific one rehearsal of this person. It was Nicholas Joseph, Czech Republic. His oh. second first rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> because he did his rehearsal three times. And first and second, or first and third didn't go to plan and if you've been looking at social media you'll see that he's in hospital now because one of the times he kind of landed awkwardly he does this big backflip but when he did it the second time everything kind of just worked and there was a flow and there was a vibrance to his performance and it was full mm -hmm. of life and color um, and it was quirky I said in a review video that the backpack was in danger of kind of becoming yeah. too much of a distraction but yet it still works like it's not like it doesn't ruin the performance for me by right. any means but the problem is then when it doesn't go smoothly it feels like you said languid yeah. like if like he messed up in the first rehearsal and he landed awkwardly or whatever and then he stopped dancing and he was standing there and he didn't complete the dance moves and it didn't have the same energy yeah and yeah and he's such a perfectionist then because he's very conscious of it and i think that comes from like i remember him saying that as an independent artist because he he's the producer the writer and everything of this track as well as the singer in control whereas like in other countries it's the head of delegation or whatever is making all these decisions or their staging thing like Nicholas is the the person in charge of everything here but when he got it right it was a great performance well my second place which is really close to my first place is Estonia I think Alina's amazing that voice yeah. did not falter I mean, we say it all the time. She hits the high notes, she hits the low notes, she hits them again, she goes louder, she takes a higher. It's not forced, though. You know how sometimes people want to hit high, high notes? It's like they're going to explode. Mm. She ain't going to explode. <laughs> she could probably go even higher. There's control and there's precision, and she looks absolutely beautiful. Oh. Personally, I love this projection. I love every single element. I know there's some talk that some people don't like the flowerscape that comes about. Mm. I love the flowerscape. I'm like, get some bumblebees. They will sit there. They will pollinate, marinate. This is gorgeous. The colors, it's like a greeting card. It could be a wallpaper. It could be, you know, a piece of art. It could be Alina in a projection dress. I love it. It's just, there's silences in the song in between the verses and it goes dim for a second. And I'm like, ooh, give me some more. Give me some more. She's like teasing it out. And she just takes us higher, and I'm kind of over the fact there's no discernible melody or memorable hook. I don't care. I'm here for the performance. This ain't a circus. This is Cirque du Soleil. This is high art, high fashion. She's like a gorgeous lava lamp that has cracked, and all that fluid is dripping out into a perfect circle. Okay? This ain't the kind you get on Amazon half price. You go into the store paying full price for that lava lamp. Okay? Suzanne's really brought it out in you, hasn't she? <laughs> um, no, I think you, you can never fault her vocal. Never. She's amazing. She is perfect. Um, but I, I, yeah, I just, I'm not a fan of the song at the end of the day, but I love her vocal. Um, my number two, my second favourite, and probably the reason why I've lost my voice is because I was laughing so hard at Belarus. Because oh. it is just wonderfully campy crazy and actually the more that I think about it I wasn't <laughs> certain when we first did our reaction but it just stands out there's yeah. every bit of it stands out and you will remember it and people will remember it because there's so many points where they could do the recap for that 
Yeah. If they could either do it her shooting the bow, or they could do it when he's got it in his hand, or his back, or the vomiting roses. Because it's just kind of weirdly crazy, and it's fun. And I almost yeah. could see it... I could see it qualifying, in a way, just because it, it harkens back to the old times of Eurovision when you've got entries like this. Um, and ultimately, his vocal was really, really good. I mean, he's, he's not the best vocalist. I and mean, you would have to say Alina is the best vocalist, um, mm. or Nessa, or something like that, or, or my number one. But his vocal is really, really strong, and it's so much better from that Belarusian national final. He has improved leaps and bounds, and that's great for us to see. But more importantly, he'll be right for when people see him for the first time in the semi-final, and then he's got the added bonus of, oh my god, what is this gimmickry on stage? Yes. Well, from our <laughs> second place, our silver, uh, silver medal, we take it to the top, to gold, poor big. Well, my gold is going to an act. I've always liked the song, but it hasn't been my favorite, and it's not my favorite song from today, but it's the person who had the most accomplished performance overall. Well said. And that was Alina from Estonia because she was the one who you looked at it and you were like, that's ready for the semi-final. She doesn't mm. need to tweak anything because there was a lot of people who were like, oh, they need to fix this camera shot or if she needs to fix her makeup or that dress doesn't work or whatever. <laughs> Whereas Alina, everything was perfect because she had rehearsed it so well for Easty Lowell and basically her yeah. movements were the same and they've just amped up the graphics. And like, I just love the dress. Like, people are saying, oh, Aliona Moon did it, Sabine Babieva did it. They didn't do this. Well, you can be like, well, every woman every year wears a dress, but they're all different dresses. And yes. nobody has had a dress like Alina's because no. their dresses just had nice little patterns floating randomly. Whereas Alina's lives with the music because when there's the big drop, the dress goes, Poof. when it rises, it goes, Poof. and like, it's just so. I don't know what the words to describe it, but it just works for me. And then Alina is just so beautiful in it. Like, oh. she looks nearly like she, the Greeks carved her out of marble and yes. like plonked her there. And she's wearing the sparkling dress and the sparkling makeup and the camera shots and everything. It just works. And then the vocals and the song, people are going on about it not having a melody and blah, 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 blah. And maybe they are right, but I think people can appreciate the the other elements to it. And if they want yeah. to dance to it, they should just look up the remix, which yes. I've been addicted to. <laughs> La oh, 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 so. Yes. And yeah, I don't know if I have much else because I'll just keep repeating myself. I could go on at length. But yes, she is my number one for day one of hers. It's like the dress has a life of its own. It's an amoeba. It's responding to its atmosphere. It's just, it's not a stationary being. And it's not just someone pressing a button. I just feel like it's so well programmed, it feels like it's alive. In any case, my winner of the day, my number one, it is Albania. Festival Kungis in the house. Fick 56, Fick me. This is amazing. Eugent? I'm not even kidding. We say Alina has the best voice of the day. I'd say actually Eugene's in there with the shot as well. It's a totally different style. He doesn't miss a note. That high note, it's piercing, but not upsetting. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There are people who hit high notes and I'm like, girl, please, boy, please, turn it off. I'm like, keep it coming. It's a pleasant piercing, which is very strange. He's just got charisma. He's a seasoned performer. He's used to performing rock gigs. He's performing for you in the front row. He's performing for you in the back row. He's seasoned. He is not nervous and he is likable. There are people who get on stage and they're so accomplished it's off-putting because they're like a diva. He ain't no diva. He's your friend who can sing. Okay? He also told me that his clothing is kind of like, he wanted to be more modern more edgy and so they did some you know diamond not diamond studs but there's some studding on it which is different than festival league kungus he is the badass who will kick your ass and then hug you afterwards do you know what i'm saying there is something strong and yet something soft there is something warm and yet there's something very cool cat and cold this is just amazing if he doesn't go to the final i'm gonna eat my hat i don't wear a hat so i ain't gotta eat it but what i'm saying is this is deserving of a spot in the final this is so good he made the song more modern more contemporary we were all slightly concerned with the revamp but for whatever reason, be it the lights, which they tell me they're fixing. I don't think they need to be fixed, but they're gonna add some more texture, I guess. This is on point. This is on point. This deserves to be in the final. It's a showcase of a genre that doesn't get showcased enough and it's done in the best possible way. Eugen, I am Team Albania, you slay. Um, so my number one for the day, uh, probably unsurprisingly, is Lithuania. Um, I, I just adored it. It made me cry. At the end of the day, I will always 
<laughs> every time I seem to cry at Eurovision. Um, I just think it was beautiful. And you know, when it's the fact that you can relate to that want and that desire to grow old with somebody, and you know, sometimes it you, you, it doesn't happen, and then sometimes it does. And that lovely thing where you've got the people, you've got the kids who are, you know, they're playing with each other, and then you've got the old couple dancing. It's just so relatable. And then in the middle of it all just that last moment when she's with her husband and it's just Mm -hmm. that because he just comes from out of the darkness and he's there all of a sudden it's like you don't need to know that's her husband because you just immediately they're so clearly in love I think it's the thing and it just really really sells it she sounded amazing Um, yeah I just I'm just in love with it and honestly if this doesn't make it I, I, I yeah I'll flip a lid. I'll eat, I'll eat many hats. Uh, out of the dark, like a star, like a hero, love will survive. Final thoughts on the day. Anything you want to say? Hmm, that's a tough one. <laughs> but what I will say is that it was a strong day, but a lot of artists didn't live up to the expectations. Some people we thought were going to be unassailable, like Netta, yeah. Nicholas and Equinox even. We thought they were going to be way up there, whereas the, f- the semi, I think, is much more open than we might have thought. Yeah. Like, we always knew it was going to be tough and that there were favourites, but the people we perceived as favourites has changed because even though I don't like all of them, we can now realistically say that Albania, Lithuania, Estonia is back in yeah. contention. Yeah. Um, and there was only really, like... As a Rusa in contention, Azerbaijan are in a t- contention. I think today the only one we can safely rule out, unfortunately for Ari, is Iceland. Um, everyone else is in contention, and that's nine acts, and there's another nine yeah. tomorrow, and only it's ten go through. So, yeah. I guess my kind of big thought of the day is that the stage doesn't need an LED. You can still do something impactful, interesting, and entertaining without an LED. Cue Belarus. Cue Czech Republic. Cue Alina from Estonia. Cue Netta from Israel. All of these acts looked great. Mm, Azerbaijan looked great. They did something different. It was almost like shark fins. I know it was futuristic mountains. Everyone brought something special. I mean, apart from perhaps Iceland, which did feel... It felt very 2010 Eurovision, but all the kind mm. of simple, bad, negative aspects of it. Didrik Solly Tangen yeah. all over again. But I gotta say, Ari sounded amazing. That oh, boy yeah. can sing, and you know, I, he can be proud of giving a good vocal, and mm. yeah. So yeah, I like the stage is what I'm trying to say. The lights, they, they work, y'all. They really work. Mm. I just think it was a very unexpected day because it has kind of blown everything open. Yeah. And I, do, I don't even think there's anyone you can say is safely going to qualify. I don't actually, I think the only one honestly is Estonia because I don't even think I like if Israel don't get it completely right and she looks completely exposed and like out of camera shot you then start to think I I, I would be shocked if it didn't mm. don't get me wrong and I do think that Bulgaria and I think Czech Republic will probably make it Bulgaria but I, I, I don't think that anybody bar Alina is guaranteed to qualify because the people who will love Alina will love her no matter what yeah. and the jury there will be people on the jury who will love her and this new jury change will help that so I think that she's the only one guaranteed to uh, guaranteed a hundred percent to qualify watch that come back and bite me I, I was about to say because you know I Opera me, so is very divisive, oh. and I think that it depends on how they word the letter to the jury. Are you voting? Sometimes it says vote for the song you like the most, vote for your favorite. Other yeah. times it's more specific. Not that they would, but if they say vote for the best song for the radio, you know, this yeah. isn't necessarily it. In any case, that is a wrap on day one. We have had ten performances. We did a few interviews. Not just you know, not all the artists gave interviews today. Yeah. Some of them are resting their vocals. Alina, for instance, won't be doing them today. Um, Israel has not is not doing them yeah, today. Yeah, won't be doing them today. Yeah, there, you know, there are a few. Obviously, Mikulas is in the hospital, so he couldn't do them yeah. today. We're wishing him the best. But stay tuned tomorrow. We'll be back with the live stream. Suzanne, Robin, other wee bloggers will be on it. We'll have more interviews, more reviews. And you know who will be here tomorrow? Debonair Arimi, WeeWeeBlogs.com. In any case, let us know what you think here on Wee Wee Blogs. Uh, make sure to like the video. And so that you can see everything and not miss anything, subscribe and turn on the notifications, for goodness sake. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.